We are back. Week four of the National Football League Bear Bets podcast. Myself, Jeff Schwartz, joined later in the gambling group chat by Sammy P and Will Hill. Oh, did that week just personify the National Football League? Like, Jaguars getting beat, Cowboys getting beat, just survivor carnage all over the place. I know Circuit Survivor, like 73% of the pool is out. What 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 a what a ridiculous week! And uh, somehow I managed three and one, so I am very excited about that. Somehow both of our best bets won, so I am happy about that. So hopefully we have gotten the early. So hopefully hopefully we're like the Eagles. Like yes. the first couple of games didn't play our starters in the preseason. Used the first couple of games to kind of just kind of work the kinks yes. out, and now and now it's now it's full steam ahead without the ridiculous tush push though. Like they got to outlaw that the play. It's not a football play. It's just a pile of people pushing each other. I mean, it looks like a football play to me. It's on the football field. No, it's not. Who could live in the word tush push? I feel like the Eagles would be offended well, if you call it tush here, push. Here, here, here's I'm, I'm going to go full disclosure now. I'm going to give credit where credit's due. I, I think people are saying tush push because it, it, tush rhymes with bush. I read the bush push Notre Dame USC. However, that, but that bush push was sort of illegal. This one is legal. Correct. However, uh, for those of you who are familiar with VEASAN and listen to VEASAN, uh, Todd Wishneff, who's a pro better, who's on the Megapod with Gil Alexander, <laughs> <I love> Todd. <laughs> and uh, he called it the Tuchus push. Well, of course he did. Which, which, every, yeah, yeah, because it's... Yeah, it's everything uh, everything so. has to be related back to, to Judaism yeah, yes. for him, yes. Um, how, how was your fast, by the way? Easy fast? It was good, yeah. It was a good fast. It was good. Um, you know, I... I uh, yeah, you just you go to the synagogue, you come home, you sleep, and you wake up and you eat some foods. It was it was good. Perfect. And then and then I cashed my Eagles bet, so it worked out well. We cashed our Eagles bet. I, yes. I took the Eagles as well in that game. I feel like after three weeks... We're sort of getting a really good idea on like who's good and who's bad in the NFL. It doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes when it comes to wagering because the lines are obviously set very sharply in the NFL. But we I think we have a good idea through three weeks now, like who's good, who's really bad, and who can probably fade a lot of times this season. And kind of like the the feisty team like in Arizona or Houston, who are gonna be, I think, a good wager this year when they're getting points each week. Right. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah, you got the good teams, the bad teams, and those problem teams like you week to week you don't really know what you're going to get yes but they're always probably going to be good to take points with though like i sure. think arizona houston i was pretty disappointed in, in the commanders last week so was i uh i know you had them yeah. uh i think I, I did not have them in my five contest picks but like that's a game where i almost that's one team where i'm sort of like ah like that i was I kind of they played well the first two weeks but bad opponents played their exactly. first sort of good team and looked terrible and I think you, I just kind of just changed my mind on Washington after one week. And I feel like that's the one team coming out this weekend that I felt like, you know, maybe they're good. And I was like, ah, they're, they're not any good. <laughs> right. Like I think so the one that I came out of this weekend thinking that way out of all the teams, like the blowouts, the bears stink, the bucks stink. Like we sort of knew that, right. It, it, like it, the, the, the Broncos aren't very good. Like we sort of know this now. Is there a team that is in that in the kind of like, middle-ish that might be maybe you and I don't view them as a middle-ish team that could be kind of a team looking forward that maybe they're better than middle or worse than middle because I got one I I think people still think the Falcons are good or like not the, I cannot and I, like I, I, I that's the one I wish that's the one thing I feel bad about on the show and in the column and missing out was the Lions because I didn't get that number at all like I, I don't know what people are seeing with the Falcons. Yeah. That number took a mat. Like the Falcons' money came in from a respected group, group betting group, and I didn't see it, so that kind of scared me off. The Lions, and it was just, unfortunately I didn't get scared off of the Eagles because it was kind of yeah. the same thing. Like money came in on Tampa, and I did, but, but I, I don't think the Falcons are good. No, like, and, and like I think they're more along the lines of like this seven and ten, six and eleven type team. People get enamored with Bijan and all the weapons yeah. that they have, but the quarterback can't play. No, and that's the most important thing. These the quarterback guys is the most important position in all sports. And um a lot of times you gotta look at that position and be like, can that guy do like the Falcons are on time, right? They run the football, their defense gets stops, but as soon as they get behind, that's it. Like they're 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 virtually done. I know in week two they, they did have a comeback against the Packers, but you're not gonna get that most times against a competent offense. Um the, the two teams that kind of come to mind and and really maybe in the positive direction, like if Pittsburgh can just sort of have an average offense, right, Bear, like an average offense, 
they're going to be a playoff contender, right? Like, I think we agree on that. And the Chargers, look, I, I, you, Brandon Staley needs to be gone now. Like, just, <laughs> just get Kelly Moore the job and be done with it, right? But the Chargers offense has been really good. Herbert threw for 400 yards this past weekend. He was 40 of 47. It was the highest completion percentage for anyone who had th- who completed, uh, excuse me, thrown the ball more than 40 times, I think. It, like, he is so good. And the pieces are there for this team to be really good. They just are coached by a bad coach. It, it's so funny. Like, you, you say that, and I laugh because I keep thinking back to Michael Lombardi, who, like, he did a segment this week on, on v and it was, he basically said, I need to start basically keeping track of the number of times that Al Davis would not have left Brandon Staley on the team playing oh, home. It's, it's just some of the stuff that he did. Well, let's get to to your bets. As you mentioned, a good winning week last week. Let, let's keep it going. Uh, these are wagers that Bear is making. We're doing this in studio, and I see him make quids all the time. So, uh, kind of a, a unique part of our show is Bear is actually wagering on these ones here. Let's get to the first one. It is the Cincinnati Bengals at the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans are getting the two and a half points. Your total is 41. The Bengals won the first game of the season. I'm on a football against the Rams. We saw that win. Well, the Titans uh, dropped uh, to the Browns. They've had some so you kind of like bad game, good game, bad game. Who do you got here, Bear? I think. Monday night's win was more about an indictment on the Rams than it was on the Bengals. Like I'm going to take the Titans plus the points here at home. I, I, I borrow is not healthy. It's clear that he's fighting through something. Their offense has not been as high octane down the field as it has in the past. Higgins just dropped balls. Chase finally had a big game, but I, th- I think that offensive line's got problems. It's just a, it's a matter of time before I think borrow really re injures that that calf even more. I hope he doesn't, but against that defense, uh, Vrabel's team coming off of an absolutely atrocious, ugly performance uh, in Cleveland last week. So, but they've looked out. They look terrible against the saints. The Chargers, the only team they actually look competent against. So I'm going to, I'm going to take the Titans plus two and a half in a very Mike Vrabel type of game. And that's it right there, right? It's a Mike Vrabel type of game. You have a, a quarterback everyone likes in Joe Burrow, and people saw the end result of them being the Rams. He's back. He's back. The Bengals are back. And everyone's going to be on them after that win. They see Tennessee get their butts kicked by the Browns. Everyone's off Tennessee. But Vrabel is so good in this position. I do not know why coaches like him and like Mike Tomlin, like if they're underdogs, you almost just like auto bet them, right? Like they, whatever they, however they motivate their team. But the reason why is they play good defense, right? They play good defense. How would they, like Sunday night game, Steelers, Steelers close. I didn't, I, we talked about this all. I didn't get it. You got three points on the road. I, I it made no sense to me. So I like your pick here with the Titans. I'll probably be riding with you in my contest picks later this week. Let, let's get to your second game here. The Patriots are at the Cowboys. The Patriots are getting six and a half points. That means Dallas fair by six and a half. The total is 43. You're going a little bit different direction than the side or total or what do you Yeah, I, I don't trust the cat laying six and a half with the Cowboys here. Dak was a problem behind that offensive line that was missing a, a bunch of guys in Arizona, a terrible loss. Yeah. And I would think after allowing 400 yards to the Cardinals in, in that game, he loses a big favorite. Didn't get a turnover in that game against Josh Dobbs in the Arizona offense. You would think that the, the Cowboys defense would take it upon themselves yeah. here, even without digs, to kind of shut this Patriots offense down. That look, 15 points against the Jets, uh, two, 280 something yards against the Dolphins. Like this unit is lacking, I think, a playmaker. Um, I think they're kind of predictable. And, and I, I would think they'd be able to shut Mac Jones in this team. But, but again, this could very easily be like a 23 17 type game. So I feel more confident about either. Patriots team total under, which is my top yeah. play, or the under in the game yeah. than I would with laying points here with Dallas. It is a great opportunity for the Cowboys defense to redeem themselves right now. What are they without Diggs? I don't know, but not in this game. It, it only Diggs matters very much and not having him in there, right? So. Like the, the Patriots offense is struggling to do much of anything. They can't generate explosive plays. Um, it, by the way, is Mac Jones the dirtiest player we don't talk about? Like, he continues to have these moments when he's he's hitting people in the groin. Chris Paul, the he, NFL. Yeah, the, the Grayson Allen of, 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 of the Grayson Allen of, uh, of the NFL. Let's get to your third game here. Uh, it is the Rams at the Colts. At the time of recording, the Colts are getting a single point here. They're plus one, and the total is 43 and a half. 
Who do you got here, Bear? Yeah, this number is depending on where you go. You, there's a there's a there's a Colts one available right now with DraftKings. They're pickums out there. So like always, as as a better, look for the best number because it does it does matter, especially yeah. in a in a situation like this with getting a point as opposed to pick is yeah is a big deal. But I, the total, by the way, is forty five and a half, not forty three and a half. If that matters to some, but that, that's a big total, right? No, it, it does seem like a high total. I just don't like the situation for the Rams. You played Monday in Cincinnati, go back back to Los Angeles, and now you got to fly back to Indianapolis, west to east, yeah. kind of a short week. And the Rams just didn't – it was just a weird game on Monday night. They're not very good right now. No, no, I, and, just, I, and I think the are. performance against the 49ers probably got them a little more hyped than they probably deserved. The win in week one against Seattle w- w- was great, but – Nakua was a non-factor yeah. in in that game on Monday. The offensive line did not look good, and I think we've seen from the Colts now that they are going to they are going to be up tempo. They're going to score points. They're going to put their quarterback in a position to succeed. Whether it's Richardson, whether it's Minshew, uh, this is actually a team. I actually with that division the way it is, yeah. the team. Like I took a shot with uh, this week on with Shane Steichen to win. Uh, Coach of the year is fifteen to one. If you if you're looking to, we cover this in the in the yeah. group chat coming up. But just to, like I took a chance with second because if if, if you think McDaniel at four to one isn't isn't a best isn't a good bet, like and the Colts maybe can win eight games and maybe be in that division race. Who knows? But uh, I, I do like the Colts here. I think they're the right side. I think it's very clear that Shane Steichen's a good football coach. Like what we've seen him do so far in Indianapolis with the offense what we saw him do with the Eagles and with the Chargers, like there's a possibility that this team is going to be very good for many years if he's their head coach. Like, and I think you've seen that in the offense last weekend. Was, that was a gritty win, man, in Baltimore, yeah. like in the rain, overtime win. Didn't go always perfect for them. They kept battling, kept fighting. I think more than anything, to, I think for you right now, like this, the Rams just aren't good. I can see the Rams being a team where like, wait, they won that week one game and they're, you know, right. they're two. It's always eight. that week one result. Like, yes, look back it, and then you're like, like, how the hell did that They're happen? just not very deep. They're not deep. Their offensive line struggling. And so the Colts here, I think it's a good wager. Let's recap what Bear has so far before we get to our best bets later in the show. Bear has the Tennessee Titans plus two and a half at home against the Bengals. You have the New England team total under 17 and a half points there, fading Mac Jones on the road. And the Indianapolis Colts are actually getting a point here as of right now. Again, a point. We'll take the point here for Bear. Let's get to the gambling group chat. We'll talk about a little NFL MVP odds, some coach of the year odds, everything to do with the National Football League. It's going to be Sammy, Will Hill, me, and the Bear. That's coming up now. Back with the gambling group chat. Myself, Chip Schwartz, Sammy P, Will Hill. It's it's a typical NFL (laughs) week. You've got (laughs) 10 games where the the number is three and a half or or less. So a bunch of toss-up games going to be super difficult for Survivor. I need need to to go through that quickly and figure out what we're going to do. But... One of the games that falls within this three and a half parameter, Jacksonville coming off a shocking performance against at home against the Texans last week where they lost. Now you go to, to London. It's funny. I was talking with Mark Ingram a couple of weeks ago about the, the, the London games. And he said the first when he walked out on that, that Tottenham Hotspur stadium, like the, he said the grass was just perfect and pristine. And then they wound up playing like not on that grass. Like the NFL put something, some other. Really? Yeah, so I, I, that's what he tells me. So I mean, I mean he played in the game. I mean, do, do you like wagering those international games? No, I, I do not. I, I, I don't, but I know someone here does, and I know Will. You have a uh, a, a, a feel here on the uh, on this London game. Yeah, I think the three and a halfs are gone, but I still like Atlanta. The dog here getting three. I just. I, I know with a 17 game schedule, there's no such thing as an eight and eight team anymore. But to me, these are both just sort of even average eight and eight teams. I, I don't know how you get to three here. I guess you give Jacksonville a point, point or and a half, maybe just for the familiarity of, hey, they play in London, you know, every year, twice a year, it seems like. But I don't know how you get to three. I mean, uh, Atlanta's, I think, seventh in the league in yards per play on defense. Jacksonville's 23rd. So, um, it's just only one stat. But to me, Atlanta's going to shorten the game, run the ball. These games, 
uh, this game, I would think, would be close, lower scoring. I just, I think this not this line is a little bit inflated just by a point or so. So, to me, two even teams. I'll take the three here with uh, with Atlanta. The thing about Jacksonville's offense is they are a couple drop passes away from being significantly better. They've lost the most explosive plays, the most yardage this year, and most kind of touchdowns from drop passes. Like if they just get the offense functioning a tad bit like it should, I feel like will the Jacksonville offense is going to be much better. Now, are you going to wager on that this weekend? I don't know, but they're very close to being a lot better than they look so far. And I'm not really high on the Falcons. If they could turn around this weekend, Jacksonville's going to score a ton of points if they could just fix a little bit of those self-inflicted wounds that I think that people really haven't noticed as often as, as maybe the, the, the numbers kind of indicate on what their offense has been so far. Yeah. Makes sense. That's Sammy, a good anything about on the, the, uh, the drop, t- the drop catches that I, I didn't, hadn't realized that that's a good staff, but yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Sammy, anything on the London game? No, I quit the London game. Cold Turkey bear about four years ago. I don't, I don't do it anymore <laughs> good for you. I have no edge. I have no idea what's going to happen. You mentioned the NFL's pulling out perfect grass. I I could make a case for the over, the under, Atlanta, Jacksonville. I oh god, I'm getting the itch just thinking about the London game from like four <laughs> years ago. I can't. I can't do it. I'm out. Are you are you in on anything with Miami Buffalo though? The the, the marquee game of the week here. Like. like well, any, anything, anything going? Because Buffalo kind of righted the shot. I thought, I thought Washington could could hang with them and keep that within the number last week. That was clearly the dead wrong side in the game, and, and Buffalo looked a lot more like the team that we thought. But but Miami is giving them problem. I mean, the playoff game last year, they had no business being in that game, and they were they won a, a low scoring game at, in, in South Florida. Like. Seems like everyone is just on Buffalo in this game because it's south of a field goal. It's two and a half. Feels like Buffalo is kind of like a very popular side this week, Sam. You got any thoughts on on that on that one? Well, given the number, I'd lay two and a half before I'd take two and a half for sure. I mean, the protection under the field goal that you get with a home favorite, and it's crazy that I mean, you say everybody's on Buffalo. I I, I tend to disagree here, Bear. I mean, we look at a game that opens really? three and okay. a half in Vegas. Superbook opened three and a half and it got blown through because there's a lot of Miami love now. And, you know, I, I'm very happy to to hold that Mike McDaniel coach of the year ticket at 20 to one. And, you know, two weeks ago we were having yep. the coach of the year conversation and Dan Campbell, Paul Bunyan had better odds than Mike McDaniel, <laughs> which is impossible. I will play football. Kind of we will run the ball nah, in the yeah, middle of the line. Nom, 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 nom. Football. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I, Dan I traded, I traded DeAndre McDaniel. Swift. I traded DeAndre Swift and we drafted Jameer Gibbs and now we're gonna we're gonna not use Gibbs at all and we're gonna let Jalen Carter, the defensive rookie of the year, slide and we're gonna take Gibbs and we're not gonna use him. Don't get me started. So you're not on the line. We're gonna take a running back in the I first actually, round. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a running back and in not, the first and, not, and not and not and not use him and not use him properly, which is the amazing thing. It, it's you said something though about the McDaniel ticket, and, and it's kind of like my a macro point about this game for me. Like, Will, are there any markets out there? Like, this seems like it's like a fulcrum type week. Like, if you like Tua for MVP or Tyreek Hill for Offensive Player of the Year, like, don't you kind of have to make the bet this week? Because if they go to if they go to Buffalo and win, you know, like those numbers are going to take a tick down. However, if you like someone else, if, if you want to bet McCaffrey or whomever is Offensive Player of the Year or some or someone else's MVP, like this is also the week to do it. So you kind of kind of anticipate what you think is going to happen in this game. I think dictates a lot of your future plays that you may or may not make this week. Right. Well, if you're betting McDaniel four to one to coach of the year, you're late to the party, but that doesn't mean it's a bad ticket. I mean, I, I think, I, I think that number should be lower. I, I feel like he's the star of the team. Everyone's talking about his offense, his spacing, all the motions he's using. Uh, I think that four to one is still a good number. Again, uh, you don't want to just uh, bet numbers that you could have gotten at much higher odds, but sometimes, hey, you got to play the ball where it lies. And to me, four to one, I think you're going to look up in six weeks or two months and be very happy to have four to one. I think he should be, you know, it, it's too early to say, hey, he should be even money or, or you know, plus 150, anything like that. But I think he is rightfully favored. And I think that number is only going to 
uh, get lower. So I, I think McDaniel's in very good shape here to win that award. He's he, he's really been the star of the team. It, that offense is just it's so innovative. They're so fast. It almost like it, it's like a basketball team running a three on two fast break. It looks like they have more guys on the field than the, the other team. And and that was without Waddle last week. That was without Armstead. So to me, McDaniel a four to one. You're late to the party, but better late than never. Let me also add this. You like quickly. the Dolphins. Just... Think about if Buffalo plays well in this game. I mean, let's play devil's advocate for a second. After the the Jet game, Josh Allen was you know horrible and four turnovers and blah, blah, blah. He's anywhere from seven to nine to one to win the MVP. What if Buffalo comes out and beats Miami by 10 points? Then we see the nine to one go to seven to one and the seven to one goes to like 650 or 625. So I, look, I mean, this is a coin flip game. That's what the house says. I don't think a Josh Allen MVP bet is the worst thing in the world, considering he was seven to one before the season. Now you can bet some nine to one. And then also Jeff on the total, this thing opened 49, 49 and a half. Now it's at 54. How do you go over 54? That's like the ceiling of the number. I, I get it. It could go over 54, but I'm not in any rush to go over 54 when I could have gone over 50 and a half, 51, 51 and a half. Well, did you, did you see that the Dolphins scored 70 points? Last I did week? see that last yeah. week, yeah. Uh, the most offensive touchdowns ever in a single game uh, in NFL history. I mean, look, kind of I think wisdom would tell you that they're not just not going to score as much this weekend, right? Um, and Buffalo, who's done a great job scoring as well, just when you have these two offensive teams for the most part, right? Like historically, the numbers, as Sammy mentioned, get so high, you just contrarian bet the under, right? Like it's just, you kind of have to, when as Sammy mentioned, the, the line moves, what, five points, Sammy? Uh, I would lean toward the under here just for that reason. Like I think everyone's on the over, everyone expects a bunch of points um and i would think this game could fall somewhere you know in the in the upper 20s for both teams and the thing too buffalo they're pl they're plus 165 right now uh is the best number i found to win the division so clearly if you want to get a buffalo division bet in this is probably the the time to do it as well well real quickly you like miami in this game though right yeah, I like Miami. There's threes out there. I would just take the three. I think, look, they'll be able to move the ball. They get a break where they get to go to Buffalo, and it's not bad weather. It's not November or December where it's 30 degrees and windy. It's going to be 70. Good, Nice weather. I think you can attack that Buffalo secondary. Uh, and look, bu Buffalo has the only loss among these teams, and that loss has not aged well when you look at, hey, this team lost to Zach Wilson uh, a few weeks ago. That, that looks even worse <laughs> than it did at the time, and it looked really bad at the time, so... Toss up game. I'll take the three. There are threes out there. If you like Buffalo, find it two and a half. And I could see a scenario where somebody's up seven late in the fourth quarter and the team that's losing scores a touchdown and goes for two and says, Hey, I'd rather win it with my offense than worry about overtime or try to win it with my defense. And then, you know, it could land on one or if there's enough time for a field goal at the other end, it could land on two. So I think the three is valuable. I, I would say if you like Buffalo, take the money line. If you like Miami plus the three, but uh, I do like Miami plus the points. What, what, what about, what a time, what about a team maybe being up seven late? inside of three minutes and then kicking a field goal yeah, and down there on front fourth and shirt in the red zone. You think that, think that might happen in this game? That would never happen. That well, would happen. That, my, my, my head was just exploding Sunday night. Just how, how do these coaches have just no clue? They have no clue. What, how, how I was on Pittsburgh. I was fine with it. I like Pittsburgh <laughs> too, but how does how I does thought maybe it was a fifth quarter I was unaware of or something. Yeah, that was a strange one. I th I think coaches panic in situations. Uh, they're not prepared for the situations. Um, they have not thought over all these situations. And they think, you know, a lot of coaches uh, have still that old school mindset of, right? Like, we're going to go get a stop. We're going to go get, you know, we're going to, if, if you're if you're the Raiders, you're playing a Steelers offense that really was mad during the game, right? A long touchdown, obviously uh, there, but like, okay, let's kick the field goal. We'll force a three and out. We'll get the ball back. Or we'll win the game. Like that, that, that's an old school sort of mindset and how things, the best coach in the NFL right now, we know are the ones that are just aggressive all the time, right? Like just aggressive, 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 except Brandon Staley, who should be fired. But luckily they won that game last weekend for them. Um, you know, it, you just have to think about, to me, always score as many points as possible at all times in this sport. And you can't rely on the three and outs anymore like like, like you did 10, 15, 20 years ago. I, I, last week, I sat here and was uh, was just despondent about my Browns. My Browns futures, they're back to life. I, should I be? Why should I not be betting? Why, why should I not be betting Cleveland again this week, laying two and a half against a, a Ravens team that – as a bunch of injuries and just offensively look like they're kind of stuck in neutral right now. Sammy, what, why, why should I not be laying the points with the, uh, with the Browns this week? That defense is so good. Oof. 
because John Harbaugh is like 68% as a small underdog, four or less. The guy just wins these games. Um, but I, I don't think that this game will dictate Cleveland AFC North or Cleveland to make the playoffs or anything like that. I mean, let's have that conversation. I mean, Nick Chubb, it was a horrible injury. I, I feel for the guy. But at the end of the day, guys, running backs aren't really worth anything. And we've seen, I mean, look at Los Angeles. Oh, Cam Akers is going to be the guy this year. He's not even on the team anymore. And they bring in Kyron Williams, who just slides right in. Offensive line is way more important than running back in 30 of the 32 NFL locker rooms. And Chubb was one of the most, you know, valuable running backs to the line. But Chubb's absence is not going to hold Cleveland back. Cleveland has arguably the best defensive line in the NFL. I mean, to bring Zadarius Smith across, put him on the other side of Miles Garrett, and let's not let's not underestimate for one second what Jimmy Schwartz has done to that defense. He's basically lining up yeah. Miles Garrett everywhere on the field. He put him at middle linebacker the other week and like rushed him up the gut. I mean, the schematics, the pressure, the potential that they have on that D line is is scary. So I, I don't think your Cleveland tickets are dead by any stretch, but this is your black and blue. 20 to 17 game either way. I don't have a single dollar around Baltimore Cleveland because Harbaugh is so good when he's plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Will, would you put a single dollar on Miles Garrett to be defensive player of the year? Everything everybody just kind of is just saying, oh, it's going to be Michael Parsons or TJ Watt. You, you think Garrett's right? I think Garrett's is he on five to one or so right now to win the award. You know, I, 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 I can look, but Will, do you think there's a, uh, is Garrett to be a defensive player of the year worth a, worth a, worth a peak? That's exactly where I was going because there's already starting to be a narrative form that, Hey, this is like a little bit like the 2000 Ravens defense where, I mean, you can't have that type of defense with these rules anymore, but they're that dominant. And if they're that dominant, you look at the best player in terms of Garrett. Uh, there, there's certainly the narrative there. He's on, I mean, he's just, he's a one man wrecking crew. Uh, you've gotten something out of Watson now. So it, it, that's going to help the team for the first time, really since the pandemic season, Watson started to look like Watson. So I think absolutely Garrett around four to one plus four fifty, something like that. Absolutely a good bet. I mean, you could probably narrow it down to him Parsons or Watt already, even though we're only like less than a month into the season, but I absolutely think that's a good number on, on Garrett still. Yeah, those are the only three guys. I'm looking at their sack numbers right now because, you know, it's interesting. Miles Garrett has maxed out 16 sacks the last two seasons. And a lot of the times, the winners of these awards are in like the upper, they're the 18, 19, 20, 21 sacks, something like that. Uh, so if he can exceed that number, he's got four and a half sacks so far. So obviously, he's on a great start. He'll easily w win this award. And I think part of the award, too, to your point about how good the Browns are, right? It's like if the Browns are a team that wins the division, Miles Garrett. With 16, 17, 18 sacks, if he breaks the 16 sack number, one again that and the way they use him to the point Sammy made is different than any other year. So they're not just lining him up over left tackle and saying, "Hey, get after it." They're finding individual matchups throughout a game, which is what Parsons does. It's not what T.J. Watt does. It's pretty impressive. Watt lines up over the right tackle every snap and just beats them. Um, but Parsons and Garrett are able to move around the field. So Garrett, in, in theory, I think has more opportunities to get those numbers. If the Browns are as good as you hope they are, Bear and other people do, then they win the North and he's in the conversation to win this, but it's, it's three guys. That's it. It's Parsons, Watt and, and Garrett, whoever ends up with the most sacks, which again, is hard to handicap. I think will end up winning this award. I thought it would be Parsons to, 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 to start the season. Um, but Garrett has, has put on good showing so far. Sammy, I held my nose. I took the Titans plus two and a half against the Bengals. Uh, do, do, do we, do we like that one at all? Yeah, I don't think that's a bad play. I mean, clearly Joe Burrow's not right. I mean, we all watch Monday night, right? <laughs> the guy, he's limping all over the field. They're shooting him up like a horse that I used to bet on back in the day. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's wild to me that that they're in that area where, you know, they were on the precipice of falling to 0-3, so they had to start Burrow. We know he's not healthy. And they're going to keep basically, what, trotting him out there until he takes the death blow? I just... I don't like what I'm seeing there on the offensive line. Will talked about this basically coming into the season. He was going to short Cincinnati. I mean, the best quarterback maybe in that division is nowhere near 100%. And with a bad line and with a, a banged up quarterback and, you know, T. Higgins hasn't played well yet this season. He's going to be looking for a big, big contract in the offseason. This is one of those weird teams and weird situations where – I, I am looking to bet against Cincinnati for maybe the first time in, in a long time, like week to week. I'm not just talking about like this spot or last week or the week before, but 
I'm looking anti Cincinnati for the first time in Burroughs career. And, and that's crazy because that, that team has made me a lot of money over the last handful of years, but I'm looking anti Cincy all season so far. Well, anything on yeah, Cincinnati, I mean, Tennessee? And I know you, no, I know I mean, you were, are, you were Cincy no playoff before the year. Yeah. I mean, these are two teams I'm down on, so, but I'm down on Tennessee too. And just from a number standpoint, if I can't get three, I, I don't like take two and a half. I'll just use it as a teaser leg. So uh, there's plenty of other candidates. If you want to just tease Cincy up to eight and a half. I mean, we've seen it with a lot of these games that are close, ugly, low scoring. A lot of these teams are having a hard time moving the ball. So uh, nothing in terms of the side, but if you want to tease Cincy up to eight and a half, you're getting protection through the three, through the seven, even through the eight, which has become a little bit more of a key number. And, you know, pick, pick your poison, whether it's Seattle on Monday night, uh, even, you know, I, I like the Browns uh, on Sunday, but if you can get the Ravens up to eight and a half of tease, I, I think the Titans are a good teaser, like, but no, no play on the side for me. I think the total of 41 is in play, taking the under here, right? The Bengals have trouble scoring. They have one less day to get Burroughs' calf sort of back to at least some sort of health where he's able to move a little bit. Tennessee, we've seen them very, be very up and down on offense, right? Bad the first week, good the second week, bad against the Browns. Like whenever they put a competent defense, the Bengals' defense is competent. This game just sort of smells like 2017, right? Like 17, right. 14, like something kind of ugly, low scoring. A Vrabel special. It's a game. What? A Vrabel special. Yeah, like just a Vrabel special. I I hate wagering against Vrabel as a home dog, though. Like I'm either taking Tennessee or no play here because they routinely just just muck up these games, make them ugly. The way they're able to rush the passer, play physical. Uh, but the Bengals defense is really good too. So like I think this is why the under would be the only play in this game for me. You mentioned the short day, short week. So, like the Rams, they had a, or I had that the Rams, rather, uh, Tampa. Tampa. No, no, wait, no, wait a minute. Wait, no, timeout. I'm good. Yeah, Rams. Yes. The Rams, right, right, Rams, Rams played Monday night yeah. in, in Cincinnati, was what I was thinking of. Now you go back home and you got to go back across the country. Now you go into the Colts. That's a weird kind of travel schedule thing as well for a team that, like, the Rams just feel kind of disjointed right now on offense. Like, didn't really use Nakua Monday night. Kyron Williams, the ball is Sammy mentioned before. You mentioned the Mike McDaniel four to one ticket to win uh, Coach of the Year. I actually played Shane Steichen the other day, like, like fifteen to one to win not Coach bad. of the Year. It's obviously not the not the best price uh, at all, but like that division, I think maybe they can get to eight wins in that division because the division isn't very good, and I don't think the Jaguars are the team that people thought. Then now I'm looking. It looks like. Uh, Game is all over the place. I see pick out there. I see Colts minus one. I see a Rams minus one. Any uh, anyone out there? Will do you have a thought on uh, Rams uh, Colts? Yeah, it would be Colts or nothing. That's a really tough travel spot, like you mentioned. The Rams play a tough physical game on Monday night on the road. Now you're playing another road game. Uh, and their offensive line did not look good. And that that's not a good situation with Stafford with an immobile quarterback. Uh, going to a loud dome behind a bad offensive line. That, that's not going to last. I, I will say Stafford behind a bad offensive line. You got something's got to give there. So uh, it would be culture. Nothing. Uh, we don't know who's going to play quarterback. I guess Richardson practice to me doesn't really matter. They're both sort of equal, even matter? though they have different skills. Yeah. It's different skill sets, but it's really sort of equal players. Minshew throws it better. Richardson's obviously a force running the ball. So to me, it'd be Colts. Sammy, any thoughts on uh Rams Colts? If Richardson plays, let's pop him again to score a touchdown. So in week one, he was plus 190 to score anytime touchdown. And then in week two, he was plus 170. He scored, I believe he scored two touchdowns in that second game. So Shane Steichen has proven one thing as a coordinator and a head coach. He's going to move his quarterback about the cabin. Even if the seatbelt light is on, he doesn't give a damn. He's going to move the quarterback. <laughs> so if Richardson plays. Sometimes sometimes, like he, sometimes you just got to get up even though that seatbelt light is on. Sometimes you just yeah, got to get up. Sit down. Make she me sit down. Doing... <laughs> <laughs> but she he's going to score. Exactly if he's going to play, he's going to be live to score. And if you could find plus 150, plus 160 on Richardson to score a touchdown with his own body, cross the goal line with the ball, I think that's a good bet. Anything over three to two. Who else's body would he score with? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be riding Quinn Nelson to the end zone. Um, we've gone way too long about uh, without talking about the, the number one topic in all of football right now is uh, how we've been uh -oh. Taylor Swift props this weekend. Oh, how, how, Will, don't, don't, don't make that noise. Will, oh, I, 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 I know, I know you're in on Taylor Swift. Will, you have, you have young daughters. Will. we know they're Swifties. 
Not yet. No, I mean, Kelsey's got to be careful. You know, Taylor Swift goes through boyfriends. Like, I don't know, like the Houston Texans go through head coaches. So Kelsey got to be careful here. Uh, this is a <laughs> tough spot for him. I don't know. Is there an angle for Kelsey to score a touchdown here? Figuring she's going to be uh, supposedly at the game on no. Sunday night. Um, okay. Okay. This might be one. This isn't, an, this isn't a Fox game. Do so. not wager on Kelsey to score a touchdown because Taylor Swift is in the audience. Like Patrick Mahomes is not thinking of himself. I got to get this man a score because Taylor Swift is in the crowd. Do do not, if you're wagering this game, for, if you want to put that down because you think he might score because of the matchup, great. But please do not do that because Taylor Swift is in the crowd. That, that never came up in the locker room. It, like, it, you, it you, never you, did. Musicians were in the. It never did. Stands. No, no. It was never something that we had to worry about. Yeah. But this is different now. This is Taylor Swift. Like she was, she was into that game too. What I, I love the stories like that came out afterwards about like, was she in this popcorn machine? Is that how like they got her into the stadium? And like- well, so her, for her concerts, they bring her in this janitorial cart. That's how they sneak her into her concerts. So they there's a thought that maybe they snuck her in Arrowhead Stadium using the same exact method. See, I I I, I don't know. Again, I would hear I would hear a song. I I would know her voice if I heard it, but I couldn't tell you the name of one song or or any. I know I know Sa- Sammy Sammy I think has seen her multiple times. So I know you're you're dialed in on this. Yeah, big time. Big fan. Uh, Kelsey's probably going to be like minus 190 to score a touchdown, too, because everybody's going to bet it. It's going to be minus 190. You watch. So you know what that means? Other way. Take the <laughs> Is plus there money a no on the no? Are these, are these two-way markets? I don't bet these a lot. Can you bet no touchdowns? Probably, probably In most not. places, you can't. Probably In most can't places, bookies. no. These bookies. It's too bad. I would never suggest this. Yeah, I, like, I usually I, don't say this, but yeah, this might be a night where like baseball season's over. This is a Sunday night game. This isn't a Fox <laughs> game. So when this is 21 to three at halftime, this might be one of these nights where you can just catch up on some sleep because this, I, I don't know how much <laughs> Zach Wilson I can watch Trevor Simeon. I don't think he's going to play. I mean, this might be one, just catch up on some sleep. Jeez. Depressing. I, I've watched enough chiefs football over the last couple of years. Um, this game does kind of scream ugly for the chiefs. Like, we're in the third quarter and it's 13 to three. And you're like, why are the chiefs not blowing this team out? I'm not saying it's going to be a game where you watch will the entire game, but the chiefs have sort of had their away game clunkers. Like they lost the Colts last season for no reason. They've had sort of these games where it's like, they should win this game by a lot, but they're sort of not. And this feels like a game this weekend where they played really against the bears. The jets are desperate. Obviously if the jets lose this game, their season is, and we can argue oh, the season's over anyways. already, but, but there's a, probably a thought within the building as a, as a former player, like they still think they can win. I know they can. It's the way they feel about it, but they get, they get blown out by the chiefs. Like there's a possibility here that this game is much closer than we think it is for a good portion of the game before really the jets offense crumbles and the jets defense, like just can't withstand the onslaught of the chiefs offense. I need to ask you this because again, you've been in the locker room and yeah. you, you know, Publicly, Robert Sala has been no. Zach's our quarterback. Oh, he's looked good in practice. It's other, other. It's not. It's not him. There are other things. Publicly, he has to say that. Yeah. Privately, he knows the guy can't play. Right. Correct. Yes, he knows that. And and I think that's the, the most disappointing thing for me um, about the Jets is, is that they really had no backup plan for Aaron Rodgers. It was like Aaron yeah. Rodgers were all in. And that's it. Look how many backups there are right now. Just being competent. Gardner Minshew won a game in Baltimore, right? Jameis Winston, I know they lost the game in New Orleans, but a competent backup. Like, there's plenty of teams that I have, like the Saints this week. That, that have competent backups. But that's more of a fate of uh, of the Bucks. Like, I think it's it's like there's competent backups to be had. And with the Jets' makeup, the run game, the wide receiving weapons they have, I know the offense line's beat up. And the defense, you could have sustained, not won a Super Bowl, but sustained a, a 8-8, 9-8 season with, like, a decent back up quarterback instead they didn't do that they said you know what we trust zach wilson who hasn't shown in his career to be any good and so that's the mistake they made it's not playing zach wilson now it's that they didn't have any backup to aaron Rodgers. they said it's aaron Rodgers or bust which i get i get why they did that but look at the like look at the contenders around the nfl they sort of all have a backup quarterback who's competent like they all sort of have someone that they trust in moments if a quarterback is out to win them games and look again you're not going to super bowl with, with a backup quarterback but you can be a competent team with a backup quarterback and and kind of keep your team afloat zach wilson provides them no opportunity to do that a backup quarterback who's going to have an opportunity to uh, sink or swim this week raiders at the chargers chargers and survivor what could possibly go wrong this week uh-huh. right will uh, survivors. Ryan Hoyer, right? Thank you, Jacksonville. <laughs> Do we know that it's not Jimmy G? Because look, I, I, you can't lay that many points with with the Chargers. But if it's not Garoppolo, I, I don't know that you can take the Raiders. But 
Uh, I mean, look, you got to pick somebody. There's no safe picks. We saw that last week with Dallas. We saw that with Jacksonville, Baltimore. I mean, there was carnage last week. Uh, there's just nothing safe. So eventually you just got to turn the card in and hope for the best. It's only five and a half, too. Like, that's the scary thing. Like, you would think if Garoppolo was in the concussion protocol on Monday, like, you wouldn't get out. Like, you wouldn't think he's going to play, right, Sammy? Does it matter? I mean, we know the Chargers are going to be up or down three with five minutes to go. It's been right. the same team for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Even dating back to Phillip Rivers is like, all right, the Chargers are down four. They got first and 10 at their own 20. Let's go. I mean, like they are, it's the same thing almost every single game. It's a one possession game with five minutes to go. They either have the ball or they're like trying to keep the team out of the end zone. It's the same script almost every single week. And Brandon Staley is lucky that Minnesota has Kirk Cousins to keep Minnesota out of the, like nobody wanted to win that game. Nobody. So no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch Vegas chargers for survivor, for teasers, for money line parlays, for nothing, for nothing. Speaking about Minnesota, who would you rather lay the three and a half on Minnesota on the road at Carolina or Denver on the road in Chicago. For me, it's Denver because I the, the the they lost by 50 points and the line opened two and a half and went immediately went to three and a half. Like the, the Bears are that bad. To me, I'd rather lay with with uh with Denver, especially I would take Denver first half. They played really well in the first half, really well. I mean, but they played better in the first half. They scored 22 points in the second half of games. I think one of those was a defensive score and one was a pun return. They cannot score in the second half of games. I think Broncos first half is a good wager. I was gonna say, speaking the same thing every week, it's kind of what, what Sam was saying, like the Bears, same thing, They're same thing. Different. Like, like you 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 were get you were dead on. In recent weeks about this, like the Bears are exactly who everybody thought the Cardinals were going to be. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, I, look, I, I guess I would actually take Minnesota just because I think it's going to be Bryce Young and you get Flores versus a rookie quarterback with a bad offensive line. You know, Minnesota is going to move the ball on anybody. It's funny. Minnesota, look, they're 0 3. They could actually be 2 and 1 3. You know, they've played okay. They were right in that game with Philly if Jeff Jefferson doesn't fumble. Uh, obviously, last week they could have won. And in week one, they, they outgained Tampa by a significant margin. So, really, regression from last year when they just every break went their way. It's the opposite this year. So, um, I, I haven't laid it with Minnesota, but if I had to lay one of the two, I would take uh, I, I would take Minnesota. But man, I can't bet it. The Bears are a laughing uh -oh. stock. I mean, we all know that they're they're so <laughs> bad. And as a Chicago, and I can say this, I mean, the team since I've been alive, they've been alive almost thirty five years now. They've been really good twice since I've been alive. Um, they're probably going to end up picking first again. Well, they didn't pick first. They traded out of one. They traded with Carolina, but they'll probably be the worst team in the league again. After three weeks, guys, their win total is down to five and a half, which is probably still too high. They're 10 to one to make the playoffs. They're 30 to one to win the division. They're 400 to one to win the Super Bowl. The only team with bigger odds is Arizona, and Arizona is clearly in tank mode. Chicago is pathetic. They're, they don't have a quarterback. They don't have a coach. They don't have a good GM. They, they have no plan. They have no leaders. And Jeff, you know, this being in those locker rooms, you look to your leaders when things are bad and things are clearly yeah. beyond bad. They're 0-3. They don't have any leaders. They have no hope. They, they have no hope. And watch them go out and win this game because Denver sucks too. But Chicago <laughs> was supposed to be the team. It was supposed to win eight games or nine games and challenge for a division. And remember, Bear, all the I, Justin Fields MVP love? Oh, I, oh I my that. God. Imagine betting Justin Fields to win the MVP. Have you lost right. your mind? I, Did you say I, they're the five Justin and a half Fields season wins? season made no sense to me. Five and a half adjusted wins over. Yeah. Wow. How, are they, how are they getting to six? That's still a great bet at the end. How under. are they getting to four? They... Yeah, I'm with you. That's a good bet. Yeah. The, it, the, the thing about... Chicago and everything you guys have mentioned is, is totally true is it looks like they're just sort of quit, right? I'm not calling them quitters. I don't think they've, the players have stopped playing See, hard, but like it's, on bear bits pod, Jeff Schwartz, it looks, yeah, no, they're, they're going to they're gonna aggregate this to, to say they quit, but it looks like a team to Sammy's point about the leadership, but it's just like dead, right? If there's not a lot of 
things you look at and say, okay, I can see the positive in this on the team. Again, they're playing hard. I'm not accusing them of, of actually quitting, but like, there's nothing that you can look at. Like, I can say the Broncos and say, okay, look, man, defensively, right? Like they should be a little bit better. Things might change around. R Russell Wilson has shown some moments of competence, right? Especially in the first half of games. There's nothing about the Bears. Like Arizona, right? They they play hard, right? Dobbs is just doing enough. Like there's things about Arizona you could say positive. There's things about the the Texans. Obviously, Stroud has been great so far. Even the Panthers, like their defense. There's nothing about the Bears at all, Sammy and Will and Chris, where you would say like, okay, this is something I could see as a future that's good about the Bears. I, there's there's not a single thing about this team right now other than maybe you get Caleb Williams and you try to get an offensive coach and maybe you say Lincoln Riley, here's $15 million, come coach Caleb Williams for us. I don't know what that's possible, but that's the positive right now is you might get Caleb Williams and might have the third pick as well because of, of some trades. I'm sorry, I'm just sitting here. And there's like, such oh, a like loser franchise. Right now. Bear, how about when and they were down 41 nothing <laughs> and they brought the field goal kicker out? That was fun, right? It, it we're, remind, down, we're down that six remind, touchdowns. It reminded me of another loser franchise, the Jets. It was 19... It was, no, no, it was 86. It was the year they got after the great start, and then the Dolphins Monday night game, they went down to South Florida and were down like 45 nothing. And Joe Walton tried the field goal kicker out to kick a field goal against the Dolphins on Monday night, and they lost 45-3 in that game. And they, when they started like 9-1, and one, and then they lost, or 10-1, and one, lost the final five regular season games, won the wild card game against the Chiefs 35-15. I was there. And then, of course, yeah. they blew the 2010 lead in Cleveland. Gastineau doing the sack dance, personal foul, and, and, and the rest was history. So. I, I was I was just looking at the I was just looking at the bear schedule while you guys a were Jets, a Jets history yeah, oh, 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 I know. I've I've lived it believe me Charles Rome's return to the fumble fumble on the opening kickoff for the eighty one wild card game you're, yeah, you're yeah. talking about things before Sam and I were born yeah. so. but, but I'm I'm, lo I'm looking at the I'm like. I'm worried I'm overthinking this now with the Bears because I was just looking. It's five and a half under five and a half and the under is like minus one fifty five and a half so I'm fine. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just now. looking like the thing is that division's so bad and like. They still got a game against the Panthers. They got okay. We, I would take the Panthers right now over them, but they're not going to go to Cleveland and win. They're not going to go to the Chargers. They'll lose twenty to seventeen, like Sammy said at the Chargers. Like, well, they I think that's what you just bet it. Right? If they like win six games. Year? You just you live with it. I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Okay. We're 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 gonna we're gonna we're fire we're firing that in right now. They they have not won a game in over calendar year, right? If I'm correct on that, right? They've they, lost they thirteen games in a row. Since. Thirteen yeah. in a row. And again, they, they they just look lifeless. Like they look like they look like they're going through the motions. You, there's a play last there week. There we go. That, place. I, I know we're rambling on the Bears. There's a play last week that um, Dan Orlovsky highlighted, but it's, it's pretty true. Like they had a rookie right tackle, Darnell Wright, who's going to be good against Chris Jones one on one, and then the How'd that go? and then the right guard, the center, and the left guard were doubling the nose tackle, and the left tackle and the tight end were blocking one other guy. So you had like six blockers in and you left the rookie right tackle by himself against Chris Jones. And the Good other scheming. five guys are blocking two defensive linemen. And it's like, like simple things like that. They don't even execute at all. Um, and Chris Jones obviously got a sack on that play. <laughs> so, Shocking. so like, it's, a, it's just a bad football team. And um, I do think the Broncos first half is a good wager this weekend. Sammy, Will, I love anything you, Bear, that but we I haven't hit on here? <laughs> I love you too, my friend. Anything out there that either guys can play it or you want to get out there this week that we haven't mentioned, Sammy? Well, Sammy first. Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, I uh, I think the Colts are a good bet here. We've sort of already talked about that. You can still get a pick them flat, minus 110. I don't think that's a bad bet at all. And I do have a little skin on the New York Giants on Monday night. I find myself on two very short home teams this week. So I like the Colts. And then on Monday, I'm going to take the Giants here. I like Dable in the spot. Always tough for Seattle to go all the way across the country. I know these guys fly first class and all that crap, but I think the Giants are in a good spot here. I like Dable awesome. against that Seattle defense. I like the Giants and I like the Colts. No, I need to go. I need to bet more Bears under five and a half. Hopefully, you didn't move the number too much on me. That's uh, I just did. Too. I'm going to do that too. Why not? When in Rome. Well, all right, what juice we're going to we're going to we're going to stop. 155. Mm. It's uh, That's meh, tough. meh. But like you said, Still worth it. Some, if, if, if it loses, it loses. I did bet that. I did bet the Bucks under eight and a half before before last week as well. So we're, yeah. we're looking good there. We, we, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to play around here and break. Sammy Will, thanks again, guys. 
Hopefully we have a uh, another good week, and we'll talk again soon. Y- y- do you think Sammy likes the Bears, or, or, or I mean, was, was that it, that clear or not? I, I think he does like them a lot. He's yeah, a big, yeah. big Bears fan. Um, they're just bad. It's just, and, and I think they're a team. And I feel like in college football, it's easier to fade football teams than it is because, like, if, when you're bad in college football, you lose by a lot of points. Right. A lot, like, like it gets bad. The NFL is a little bit tougher, but the Bears might be in that category. The Broncos lost 70 to 20. They allowed 10 offensive touchdowns. If my math is correct, I'm not the best in math. I think, I think math is right there. They allowed seven, it's gonna be 10 offensive touchdowns, right? And the, this line opened two and a half and got bet up to three and a half. Immediately. Like that's how people feel about the Bears. A team that's three and oh, that lost by 50 points is going back on the road, and the Bears are getting three and a half at home. Like, the Bears are not good, man. Like they're an auto fade, I think, which is again it's hard to do in the NFL. So, but let's get your oh, I was going to say, you know, let's spin it forward to yeah. this week now. Do you roll the dice with a team like the Broncos in Survivor? Um, I think you. Well, I, I, see, so, I can't because yeah. they knocked they knocked one of my <laughs> they knocked one of my entries out with, against the Commanders a couple of weeks ago from twenty one so, three yeah. up. So, so I personally would not trust them. Seventy four percent, even in this spot. Seventy four percent of the circus survivors already gone after three weeks. Can I throw out one out there that I think is interesting? Yeah, of um, course. I think I I just despise the international game putting any sort of stake in that game at all. Mm-hmm. But could you get Jacksonville this week and and use Jacksonville? I, their offense is due for a game. Like their offense is 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 very close to being so much better. We don't like Atlanta. We know right. that. Could you use Jacksonville this week and just say let's use them? It's a little off the beaten path, but that's a a, a a place to just knock out Jacksonville. I think you could because look, unless you are have the Chiefs available, yeah, and you just want to. And you may, because you look at all these games, most of them are like within three and a yeah. half, three, three points. Like you, you, and, and the only other one that isn't is the chargers. And do you want to play the Brandon Sealy game? Like we, we were no, just talking you, you again. Never uh, play the uh, chargers. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe against the Raiders. Like you just say, like, I'll take them against the Raiders at some point this year. That feels like a chargers play. Um, but and yeah, right. didn't, didn't, didn't the Raiders beat them one year? Yeah, like, like, the, like the Chargers needed to win to go to the playoffs yeah. and the Raiders beat them. Yeah. <laughs> it, was two, it was two years ago. Two years ago there was yeah. a whole talk about like... Yeah, the, they, oh, that's right. The, 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 if they tie, yeah, the tie, the the tie my, t- my ticket that I had yeah. that would have been yeah. a, a, a massive five-figure <laughs> score that Brandon Saley screwed me out of. But but like, seriously, unless, you're, unless you are just saving the 49ers or saving the Chiefs, and, and yeah. I get that, but this really might be a week to burn one of those two teams yeah. because do you want to trust the Chargers? No. Do you want to trust – some t- t- people hate taking road teams. Do you want to trust the Vikings on the road against that, Carolina? That would, be a, that would be a spot to take. Carolina is bad. Thing. And, and, and the Vikings, Carolina is low-key right. bad. And the Vikings had – They've had three tough close. Like they've had those three, you know, one score losses. Where obviously last year they were 10 on those games. They're 0-3 now. They're due for a positive regression game. I think I'd go with Jacksonville. That that's how I took. I, I think if I had one entry, I would roll the dice, go with Jacksonville, and and live with it. I think if I had multiple entries, I'd play one safe and figure out who has the most value moving forward, depending on the rules of your league, and go with either Kansas City or San Francisco, and then use Jacksonville on the other one. I think that's what I would do. No, I, I want no. I want no part of the Vikings. No, I want no part of the Chargers. Never Chargers. If I had to take a part, of, if I had to take one of those teams, I would probably go with the Vikings because Will was talking about before. They kind of doing the same thing they did last year, except they've like lost these games. Yeah, eventually, this, this but, regression I would imagine at some point to the, the positive the Panthers, side. The Panthers have no weapons at all. No, they have no wide receivers. Yeah, they have no wide receivers. All right, let's get to a recap of your wagers so far before we get into our best bets of the show. You have the Tennessee Titans plus two and a half. You have the Patriots team total under 17 and a half. You have Indianapolis here getting a point. As we're taping right now, you get one book has a point, man. And so exactly we'll take right. a point for the Colts. Let's get to your, your best bet of the week, Bear. What do you got? Uh, I'm betting against the Buccaneers here. Uh, yes. as, as I did on Monday night, I'm going to play the, I, I, Jameis fine. I'll ride with Jameis. I'll lay three points with the saints. Uh, the saints defense a lot this year. It's a lot of what 15, 17 and 18 yeah, points they're good on defense. Yeah. They're really good on defense. We saw that bucks offense is very limited. I mean, 
they're not facing an Eagles type defensive line, but I think they're going to have trouble moving the ball. If they, if they can, if they can get to 20 points, this field, if they can get to 20 <laughs> points, fine. But uh, I do like the saints coming off of yeah. the, blowing that game last week, uh, coming home. I'll lay the three with New Orleans. We nailed that Bucks Eagles game last weekend, but we were all yeah. on that. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, it, no, it made no sense. It didn't make sense, yeah. the number. And fortunately, it was one of those instances where the number that didn't make sense, yeah. we were on the right side of why it didn't make sense. We absolutely were. My best bet for the week is fading Zach Wilson. Let's go Jets under 15 and a half points. They're hosting the Chiefs this weekend. The Chiefs defense has allowed 14 points, nine points, and 10 points. They're really good defense. They're, 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 they're uh, fifth in efficiency right now. And more than anything else, Bear, you're a Jets fan. You unfortunately have to watch all of these games. Zach Wilson is playing with no confidence whatsoever, like none, like zero. <laughs> I, unless they score defensively, How they're just score? not going to score twice on offense. It's just not going to happen, right? Like they're not going to be able to move the ball down the field. There's whispers about sort of this revolt coming at some point by the Jets' defense, right, because Zach Wilson's not able to help them out at all. Trevor Simeon's not going to play, but even if he did, I don't feel great about it. So to me, you look at what Zach Wilson is right now, you look at the Chiefs' defense, and you just say, you know what, let's fade the Jets scoring two touchdowns, basically. And so I'm going Jets under here, 15 and a half. Uh, this might be Zach Wilson's last game under, under center, which it probably should be. He's not a good quarterback. He's not set up for yeah, this. But they don't, you hit on it before. They don't have a plan. Like you're not, you're really signing Trevor Simeon just to play Trevor Simeon. Yeah, they, like they had no plan. And in this game, Kansas City's defense guys, they played five rookies last season for a big majority of a Super Bowl championship defense. They're, they're <laughs> really good this year. They're going to blitz. We know Steve Spagnuolo loves to blitz. They're going to just, he's going to be bad for Zach Wilson. And everything's I, bad. And, exactly. and like he just doesn't even complete basic routes. And, and there was a video I saw put out where he just hit a check down when he had Wilson open. He's not a confident player right now. Chiefs are playing with confidence and they're playing for Taylor Swift. Who's in the crowd uh, for the, for, for the second straight week. So uh, that's my uh, best bet. Bears best bet. Obviously, as we talked about new Orleans here, minus the three, let's get to Fox super six. It's not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for week three. Download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. Just go and download that app, Bear. And check out, I have a column on foxsports.com that will have my analysis of the Fox Super 6 as well, so you can uh, check that out, and hopefully that can be a little bit of a cheat sheet for you uh, to hopefully win, win the money. What's better than free and what's better than money? Nothing, right? Nothing. A, f a free, like, New York bagel will be good. I'll take that. Free food. I appreciate breakfast again this morning, Jeff. Thank <laughs> you welcome. very much. That's all we got for this week. Hopefully we can uh, win a couple of our best bets again. Hopefully we can have a winning week in, in, in our bets. It's the NFL, so you never know what you're going to get. Look forward to seeing what happens uh, this coming weekend, Sunday and Monday. For Jeff, Sammy, Will, I'm the Bear. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.